Starwood is in the unique position of being a very diversified global company. And as we look at 2010 and beyond, growing our global footprint is a terrific opportunity for us. Historically, 50% of the pipeline has been in North America. And as we look forward, greater towards 60 or 70% of the pipeline should be in markets such as Europe and Asia and elsewhere, which is a nice opportunity for us going forward. I, I think the opportunity uh, for Long Island hotels uh, and, and other companies out there um, is to maximize the properties that we have right now. Um, reinvest in the property, reinvest in our personnel, um, keep our market share, increase our market share, um, put dollars into the property so our guests can see that they're well maintained. And if, if budget permits, put additional personnel for additional salespeople, go out and, and, and grab the market, uh, steal from your competitors if you can. And I, I think that, that increases your bottom line when uh, perhaps uh, your competing properties are, are at their weakest. Well, we're going we're gonna to look uh, at doing a number of different things in 2010, as we have in 2009, frankly. We're going to really continue uh, on pretty much the same track. We, we're, we are doing, um, for really the first time, uh, we're pursuing uh, third-party type opportunities on the management side. Um, which, you know, something relatively new for us. Uh, we've mostly been a, a, an owner-operator uh, managing uh, our own assets that we, that we own with capital partners. But we have a significant infrastructure and the lack of availability of, uh, of good acquisition opportunities over the last couple of years has, you know, opened our eyes to, to think about uh, doing some third-party fee-based business. Well, I think the opportunity for Noble, uh, certainly in 2010, is to you know, continue to focus on our, our core principles and core values, uh, you know, maintain uh, you know, a significant uh, uh, focus on management, uh, really uh, around you know, increasing uh, market share, uh, margins. Uh, from an investment standpoint, you know, we are uh, actively uh, looking for uh, new deals. Uh, we continue to uh, spend time looking for uh, small portfolios, select service in particular. Um, you know, we're currently in 15 states. Uh, our goal is to continue to grow uh, and you know, deploy the capital uh, remaining that we have in our fund. Well, for us, um, you know, we've changed our business model completely. Um, you know, we were mixed-use urban core developers with a hospitality focus. And uh, that, built, that business really just doesn't exist today. Um, given that fact, we've moved to doing smaller projects similar to the Jacksonville project, which is an aloft that we're breaking ground on this week, actually. Um, and that's more of a fee-based business, uh, as well as going after distressed assets, which you know everybody in their mother is going after and thinking that that, that shoe is going to fall here uh, in 2010. We're looking forward to 2010 as uh, 20 or two, 2009 was a very, very difficult year, not only for everybody in the industry, particularly for operating companies. Um, th there weren't a lot of transactions, and when there aren't a lot of transactions as a third-party operator, it makes it very difficult to acquire new contracts and to I increase, uh, increase the portfolio. In 2010, um, it, it's unfortunate, but when special servicers and banks start taking back properties, uh, one of the first things they do is look to change the existing management company. Uh, we've had more calls, I think, during the last six months uh, th than any other time so that I can recall that the, the company is being asked to step into the role as, as an operator. Um, uh, the unfortunate part about this is, is th there's very little capital to, to improve the asset, and, you, and you're working on a very day-to-day -day type of situation where it's, it's, it's very tough to service the customer needs, the brand needs, as well as, um, as, well as meet uh, the requirements of, of the, the asset. So that is it's kind of a bittersweet opportunity in 2010 for us. Uh, I think in 2010, I, I've, uh, um, I've been kind of called a bear for a long time, calling this market downturn for a number of years. And 
I think I'm a little bit ahead of some others saying that you know not everyone believes this. I do think things are going to get very active in 2010 uh, for a lot of reasons, which I think we'll talk more about today. I believe um, uh, things are coming together in a way where uh, you're going to see transaction volume really pick up uh, over the next number of months. We're seeing it already. Uh, things that we were not seeing three, four, five months ago are taking place currently, and I think that'll just continue picking up through the second half of the year in 2010. CB Richard Ellis is focused uh, strongly in the special servicer segment currently. Uh, we're doing a number of uh, broker opinions of value, uh, providing advice. Uh, all of the special servicers are, are, are on our radar screen. Um, we're enthusiastic about the opportunity of converting these BOVs to actual listings. Uh, however, we're not sure if that's going to happen in 10 or 11. Well, Jones Lang & Style Hotel's business uh, is fairly broad. Um, we obviously do investment sales across the board, select service hotels and full service hotels and luxury properties, as well as arrange financing, uh, conduct advisory business and, um, and asset management. So our opportunities are actually very, very broad in 2010. I mean, it's really across all of those lines of business. Uh, as lenders take back properties, uh, we'll be doing more consulting, advisory, and a significant amount of asset management. As borrowers uh, need to recapitalize their assets, uh, we'll be raising capital for them as part of restructurings. Uh, and then we're going to be selling properties. Uh, we're also going to be sourcing capital uh, around the world as uh, their opportunities become really apparent in the U.S. in 2010. We expect to see an influx of foreign capital uh, as well as high net worth capital coming into the market. In terms of fool's gold, things that are going to... Uh, people are looking back at some of the things that we did in the early 90s and you know, they're putting pools of capital together and they think it's going to be an opportunity to buy hotels at very distressed prices and make fortunes. And I would just caution people uh, to really understand the markets because I don't think this is the same as the early 90s. Uh, depending on what your view of the world is, I think this is going to be a very long and protracted recovery. Uh, I do think there's opportunity out there. We're buyers and I think uh, people will do, buy, do well buying in this environment. But uh, I don't think it's the, the quick flip, uh, make your money in a few years that we saw in the early 90s. I think it's going to take a long time and buyers are going to need to be prepared to settle in for the long haul. Different, different opportunity than the early 90s. From an industry perspective, looking at 2010, there are a lot of predictions that the transaction market will pick up mid-year. And I think fool's gold may be to think that there will be a flood of activity in the middle of the year where there may actually be more pockets of activity in 2010 and 2011, and that's what we should plan for. You know, I, I think uh, certainly in 2009, you know, we were, you know, very cautious. Uh, we have not made an investment since mid-2008. Um, you know, 2010, you know, our expectation is that, that opportunities, um, you know, should be forthcoming. However, you know, we still have not, you know, really seen um, you know, the, the, the magnitude and level of opportunities, you know, uh, in the sectors that we like to play uh, and invest in uh, up to this point. So, you know, we are proceeding with caution while trying to remain, you know, optimistic that investments will present themselves. You know, we continue to try to create opportunities for ourselves uh, through, you know, the avenues, uh, through lots of, you know, new avenues that, that we see uh, in terms of, um, you know, where we hunt, uh, you know, for these deals. I, I, I think uh, we're in a transition period right now. And um, new projects or, or purchasing uh, additional properties uh, should really be very well thought out. Um, obviously, uh, financing is much more difficult than it used to be. Um, additional equity infusions uh, are required at this time, whether it's a, a conversion, existing property, a new development. You know, on, on the on the good quality asset side, uh, I, I think it's possible that the level of really distressed opportunities that a lot of people are, you know, have been talking about, have been raising capital around, et cetera, you know, may not, in fact, you know, come to fore in the kind of wave that, uh, you know, we saw, for example, in the early 90s. 
Well, I think the fool's gold aspect of this is, is the simple fact that these deals might never, these distressed assets may just never come to market, actually. Um, everybody expects this shoe to fall, uh, but right now nobody's really seeing the deal flow. It, people have, for the last 18 months, have, have talked about the opportunity of assets that are going to be sold at a s substantial discount to uh, replacement cost. And that said, every uh, private equity firm that we're aware of, that we do business with, every institutional buyer have set aside a, a fair amount of capital that, that they intend to deploy in these distressed asset acquisitions. And whether you uh, choose to use different tranches such as select service, full service, resort, luxury, the, the unfortunate part is there's just so much money that's going to chase that so quickly. Yeah, and we're spending a lot of time on the special service or segment and uh, uh, to date, we haven't seen a, a lot of uh, conversions of, of BOVs to transactions. Uh, so a lot of time is spent in terms of going out, looking at the assets, putting together reports um, with you know, little in terms of conversion to actual opportunities. You, can't, you cannot time the bottom, just as you can't time the top of the market. And there are, gonna, there are gonna be significant opportunities that come up, but if you wait too long, if investors wait too long um, for the capital markets to improve and for the for industry fundamentals to bottom out, cap rates will compress again. And uh, so, you know, we think the opportunities are going to be in the early part of 2010. Um, if you wait too long for the second half of 2010 and into 2011, I think you're going to see more capital coming into the market. There's a lot of new capital being formed. Uh, and cap rates will compress. So I think the best buying opportunities are going to be uh, towards the um, early to middle part of 2010.